Good morning and welcome to Haven Green at Home, worship from Haven Green Baptist Church and my name is Dave Royster, the pastor. It really is a pleasure to welcome you. Today I'm rejoicing, as indeed are my family, that my mum has come through her surgery and we're really grateful to you if you've been praying for her. I wonder what kind of a week that you've had, whether you've uh, had a week where you've been really rejoicing in God's goodness or whether it's been a bit of a, a, a difficult and a challenging week for you. We are uh, today really going to be thinking about the ups and downs of life and it's so good to know that God is with us in the ups and downs. I'd just like to share a couple of verses of scripture uh, from Romans chapter 8 where Paul writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or persecution? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, we will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing is able to separate us from God. So whatever um, your experience this week has been, may that be a word for you as we come together uh, this morning. We'd love to hear how your week has been and any stories that you have uh, that, that would be an encouragement uh, to others. And please do remember that we have an email address, story at havengreen.org.uk. Please do send in anything at all that you think would be an encouragement to others. And of course, you're also able to send in uh, prayer requests as well uh, to us. But let's, uh, let's continue our worship as we pray together. Lord, we thank you so much that we can spend this time together and we thank you for these words that remind us that nothing can separate us from you and we thank you Lord Jesus that you came into the world to be with us you came into the world to die on a cross to pay the price for our sin and Lord that we are forgiven sinners today as we confess our sins to you Lord, that you uh, forgive us our sins and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord, so that nothing can separate us from you. Nothing can separate us from your love. And so we pray today and ask Holy Spirit that you would come and be with us in this time and that you'll help us in our worship. And we pray that as we, as we uh, come to, to listen to your word later on, that you would encourage us and that, Lord, that you would speak to us, uh, that this would be a, a special and a sacred moment in our week uh, together. And Lord, as we come to worship now, we want to, Lord, open our eyes and say, God, we look to you. Have your way amongst us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I look to you. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. Know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, 
You're where my help comes from. Give me this turn. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People who looked to God were Jesus' disciples when they were in a boat on the Sea of Galilee one day and they were caught up in the storm. And I certainly know what it's like to be caught up in the storm on the sea from my time in the Navy. It's not always a fun thing. And uh, here's a picture of the disciples in their boat in the storm. And I'm going to tell you the story now from Bob Hartman's book, The Storyteller's Bible. It was a perfect day. The sky was blue, the lake too, and it's just a gentle breeze that whipped up little waves, just little white foamy waves. And Jesus sat at the side of the lake and talked to the people about God. God is your father, he said. He dresses the flowers in beautiful colours. He makes sure the birds have enough to eat. But you are his sons and daughters. Don't you think he can clothe and feed you too? So trust him and stop worrying about your lives. When Jesus had finished teaching, he was tired, so he called his closest friends together and they piled into a boat and set off across the lake for home. Jesus yawned, oh, stretched and laid his head down to the rhythm of the waves and the rocking of the boat. He fell asleep was the perfect end to the perfect day. And then suddenly, the day was not so perfect. The sky turned black, the lake too. And the wild winds stirred, and the waves got up, and they were tall and stormy. And the boat rocked right, and the boat rocked left, and the boat rocked up and down and up and down. And the boat rocked so hard, in fact, Jesus' friends were sure they were all going to drown. But Jesus slept right through it, except for the old snuffle and snore. Jesus! His friends called out at last. Jesus, wake up, wake up, we're all going to drown. So Jesus woke up and then he sat up. It was all anybody could do to stand on their feet. But Jesus stood up and then very calmly 
he said to the wind, quiet now. And he said to the waves, settle down. And they did. And Jesus turned to his friends and said, you didn't need to be frightened. You didn't have to worry. All you had to do was trust me. See, everything is calm. And so it was. The sky was blue. The lake, too. And a little wave splashed happily at the side of the boat. It was a perfect day again. When life gets difficult, it's important to trust Jesus and to talk to him. were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high, your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Let's sing death. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. Silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. For you have no rival, you have no equal. Now and Yours is the name above all names. You have no rival, for you have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name. compares to this what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful 
powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You are here. I worship you, I worship you, you are here working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Cause you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you, cause you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, for you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are, 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 cause you are way me. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's continue in an attitude of worship. The Lord is here moving in our midst and he is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, the light in the darkness and he wants to continue to work in our, in our lives and our situations. So I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and to do the work in, in your life and in my life that he wants to do this morning. So, once again, could I just encourage you, if you want to receive from the Lord this morning, just to open your hands where you are, have your eyes closed in an attitude to receive from him. So come Holy Spirit. Come and speak with us, come and do that work that you want to do within us today. you Lord that you 
are here moving in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in us. And thank you that you're not limited to the time that we have this morning. Pray, Lord, that we would give you the time during this day to do what you would want to do in us. You can at any time just ask the Holy Spirit to, to minister to you and to speak to you and he will do that. So please, please do continue to, to seek him and to call out to him, to call upon him. But now Sally is going to, going to bring our reading uh, for this morning and then Tony will lead us in some prayers of intercession. Psalm 62. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down, this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that through Jesus Christ we find salvation, that in Christ our souls find rest in you. You are our rock and salvation. Lord, we come in Christ to you to bring our prayers. We pray for the world during this time of social unrest. We, pr we pray particularly for George Floyd's family in their sadness and hurt, that you may give them comfort and fill them with your love. We thank you that as we pray your kingdom come, that part of your kingdom values is justice, and so, Father, with the proclamation of the gospel of Christ going far and wide, we pray that your justice may come too. 
May your justice and care be upon peoples of all colours, languages, cultures, classes, education, ability and health. May the gospel of Christ have transforming power to bring justice to all in all situations. Father, we thank you uh, for the effects of the pandemic lessening and may we continue to depend on you and to seek you at work during this time. Father, we particularly pray for those with medical conditions who are more at risk during the pandemic. Lord, may your hand of protection shield them from harm and may your presence be with them in all circumstances. Father, we pray for us as a church family that we may continue to support one another and contact one another where this is yet to be done. May we feel encouraged by one another and reach out to one another. Father, we pray for Haven Green Baptist Church, our family, uh, that in your kindness, your grace and generosity, that you may continue to speak to us about your plans and purposes for the body of Christ at Haven Green, how we may live out our faith in Christ together. And Father, as we bring these matters to you, um, we pray that the joy of Christ may be filled in us that you may fill us with the strength and perseverance in Christ, that you may fill us with love and laughter in Christ, that you may fill us with the righteousness and goodness of Christ, that you may fill us with Christ. And we bring these prayers to you, our Heavenly Father, thanking you that power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. Amen. This morning, I'm excited to beginning a new series called Finding a Voice in the Psalms. The Psalms is a collection of 150 uh, songs and prayers that we find right in the middle of the Bible. So if you're not that familiar with the Bible, it's really handy uh, that we can just pick up our Bible and look for the middle and that's where we find the Psalms. The Psalms themselves, is, as I say, is a book of 150 um, songs and prayers and they were, they were put together in their current form, probably around about 300 years before Jesus was born. But they date back much longer uh, than that. Uh, most of them, or many of them indeed, were um, attributed to King David, uh, uh, who, who lived around about a thousand years before Jesus was born. And many, many people um, find the Psalms to be hugely encouraging and helpful, as do I. They bring comfort to us, they bring encouragement to us, they help us to know how to pray and we can use them in many different ways. We use them in church services of course, I often use them to, to begin a service of worship. We can use them in personal prayer and devotions as well. One of the uh, um, early church fathers, a, a chap from Egypt called Athanasius, um, he, he wrote this about the Psalms. He said, it is my view that in the words of this book, the whole human life, its basic spiritual conduct, and as well its occasional movements and thoughts, is comprehended and contained. Nothing is to be found in human life is omitted. So everything in human life, all the emotions, all the ups and downs of life, is to be found in the book of Psalms, he said. Someone writing much later on, a guy that many of us would have heard of, I'm sure, Bono of U2 fame, put it this way. What is so powerful about the Psalms are, as well as their being gospel and songs of praise, they are also the blues. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at some of the Psalms and to see how the authors lived out their lives in relationship with God in the rough and tumble of everyday lives. Yes, it was about 3,000 years ago, but perhaps you'll be surprised to discover that there are timeless truths in this book of Psalms and that they will actually help us to live our lives in the ups and downs, the rough and tumble of lives today in 2020 in the UK or wherever you happen to be in your life today. So let's begin this morning with Psalm 62 that Sally read to us a little earlier on. 
The news this week has been a bit mixed, hasn't it? It's been great that uh, racial justice has really caught a nerve and people are dealing with that issue um, in a way that hasn't been dealt with for some time. But of course, other, other news hasn't been so good. There is, again, news of fear of the COVID-19, the economic crisis, and we've seen um, uh, the, uh, the graphs of the economic decline and so on. Talk about recession, talk about quarantine for travellers and all of that kind of stuff. Not really very encouraging, unless we want to be encouraged to be fearful and anxious looking to the future. As I said a few weeks ago, these things tend to be a self-fulfilling prophecy for us, tending to make us become more anxious and more concerned about the future. Last weekend, the church, uh, we were praying and fasting and seeking God for the future. And I'm sharing with the elders on Thursday night that I really sense that God was stirring us up at this time as a people. But we look to the future at the moment with uncertainty. And maybe you are looking to the future with uncertainty today. But actually the future is no, no, no more uncertain than it ever has been. If we look back to 2019, the future was uncertain as we were looking forward from 2019. No one expected COVID-19 to arrive. But there's that sense that we, we have that uh, uh, understanding that we can trust in economic systems, we can trust in our view of the future. But can we? Many times in the Bible we read that actually the future, the things that we put our faith in, is uncertain. But there is one thing that we can put our faith in that is certain, and that is God. This isn't time to lose our faith in God. This is a time to trust him. God has not been caught out by COVID-19, as I have said many times before. God is not the author of COVID-19, but God is the one who will bring us through it. So let's see this morning how Psalm 62 can help us to rest in the shaking that we are experiencing at the moment. And I'm sure that we will experience shaking again in the future. Last Sunday, as we were thinking about racial justice, I quoted these words from Martin Luther King's famous I Have a Dream speech. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Now, of course, he didn't uh, pen those words himself. Those words are the opening words from the American Declaration of independence, powerful words that are the mainstay, the foundation of the American nation, the USA. The Declaration of Independence. The Psalm, Psalm 62, begins with the Declaration of Dependence. Declaration of Dependence. And as we look at verses 1 and 2 this morning, we see actually that David there, who is the author of this psalm, says, truly my soul finds rest in God alone. Some wise person said, never forget in the darkness what you learnt in the light. Just as the future is no more uncertain today than it was last year, so God is no more uncertain today than he was in the past. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. It's important for us in times of uncertainty, in times of shaking, let us say, for us to put down markers, to put down a line in the sand, to say, this is where I stand, this is what I believe, this is what I have experienced in my life. You notice in, this, in these, in these uh, words in the psalm that David says three times, truly. He's not speaking of theological truths, particularly here, so much as life experiences, things that he's learned, things that he's experienced in his life. He says in verse 1, truly my soul finds rest 
in God alone. And then in verse 2, truly he is my rock and my salvation. And again in verse 6, truly he is my rock and my salvation again. David has experienced God being these things to him. And a really great way for us to, to be able to put this line in the sand is to be able to keep a record of the things that we've experienced of God and to put that in a journal, to write down the things that God has been saying to us and the things that God has been showing us, what we've experienced of God, and to put that down and date it so that we can come back to it and we can say, yes, truly, truly my soul found rest in God during COVID-19. Truly my, find, my, my soul finds rest in God and my salvation comes from him. David was very clear that God is his rock and God is your rock. God wants to be your rock. God is my rock. He's the foundation on which we can build our lives. Jesus used that very idea in Matthew 7 at the end of the Sermon on the Mount when he was talking about the importance of building our lives, not on the same foundation that everybody else seems to build their lives on, whether it's economic um, uh, success, whether it's uh, um, relationships or whatever it would be. Building our lives on the foundation that is trusting in God, building our lives on the rock, not on the sand. If we build our lives on the rock, our lives will stand firm. David says here as well that God is our salvation, our fortress. In the book of Proverbs we read, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower, the righteous run into it and they are safe. This psalm, just a word on the structure, is what they call a chiastic structure, a cross-shaped structure. And so uh, what, we, what we see in the structure of this psalm is that verses 1 and 2 and 11 and 12 kind of come together. Verses 3 and 4 and 9 and 10 come together. So it kind of does that with the, with the, with the, with the psalm. And so we, if we jump on to verses 11 and 12, they link in with what we're saying about verses 1 and 2. And so David there in verse 11 says that power belongs to, to God, meaning that God can do what he says he will do. And then in verse 12, with you, Lord, is unfailing love. So God can do what he says he will do, but actually God will do what he says he will do. We can trust him. And we've been reminded a lot recently, that, uh, that wonderful verse, that all the promises of God are yes, in Christ Jesus. So it's important in a time of shaking that we declare our dependence on God. The second thing that David helps us with in this psalm is to uh, tell us to not be deceived. Do not be deceived, verses 3 and 4 and 9 and 10. So David has, has put his line in the sand and from that position of strength, he addresses his enemies directly. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from the lofty, my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. The opposition that David faces is real. And it's painful, but David sees through it all. We could read this and wonder, is David a little bit paranoid? Of course, I don't think he is being paranoid. He faced many enemies. They were very real enemies, and you can read about it in the Old Testament scriptures. One of his great enemies, of course, was King Saul, the one who was king um, uh, before him. And David had many opportunities uh, uh, to deal with that king, to, to, well, to kill him, as you will perhaps know. But David was always uh, good to that king, always sought the best 
but that king. And uh, so David wasn't at all paranoid. <laughs> but as we think about our enemies, we are in a situation, I, I speak a lot about the media, but it's not just the media, is it? But the media, other people, other value systems, they can have a huge impact on our, on our emotional and our spiritual well-being. And it's right that we give expression, isn't it, to our emotions. But it's also important to make sure that our emotions are not being manipulated. David was very well aware that with their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. For example, at the moment, the media can present stuff in really attractive ways. But actually, is what, that they're, is what they're presenting helpful to our souls? I was watching the, uh, the news on Friday night. I think it was probably news night. No, it was the ITV news on Friday night. And uh, they were talking about the, the, uh, the economy shrinking by 20%. And there was that, that graph, and we've probably all seen it, about the economy kind of doing this, and then there was that line that does that in April. As we look at that, does that help us to, to have a positive outlook for the future? Does it, does it bless our souls to think that, that, that God is good and that God is going to see us through this? Or does it encourage us to be anxious and fearful of the future? Does it make us worry? Of course, it makes us worry. Well, that's the intention behind it, I believe. It's not good for our souls to see that. It was news from two months ago, but not helpful to see it in that way. It's important that we are careful and that we guard our souls, that we watch out for what it is that is coming in. Years and years and years ago, I used to watch EastEnders, and you may love that programme. But again, I stopped watching it because I realised it was not good for my soul. There were bad stories and bad things always happening. You may love it and it may be good for your soul. But actually, it's important for us to watch out and to guard our souls from these things. Let's not be deceived. Let's, let's make sure that our emotions are not being manipulated by enemies. David, uh, in verses 9 and 10, moves on and talks about, uh, about um, how human life is but a breath. Talks about us not being deceived by material and financial gain in life. And of course that is at the heart of a lot about what the media is talking about at the moment, getting us to be fearful about our financial situations. Paul writing to the young Timothy um, in 1 Timothy chapter 6 has this to say. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. At verse 6, particularly important for this time, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. Godliness with contentment is a place of rest. So David tells us, Resting in the shaking, do not be deceived. And then thirdly, he says, hope in God 
We've been praying, haven't we, for the, uh, the, the Unite 714 prayers for the past couple of months because we believe that God wants to answer our prayers and to, and to eradicate COVID-19. Hoping, and we hope that he will do that. Not a wishful thinking kind of hope, but, but a, a hope that is based on what we know of God's character and, and, and knowing that actually he will do this. David says in verse 5, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. An interesting question is which comes first, rest or hope? We were thinking this morning, weren't we, about Jesus sleeping in the boat. He could sleep in the boat because his hope was in God. So he was resting in the moment, knowing that all was well because of his trust in God for the future. But perhaps uh, we can also um, uh, just have that hope for the future because we know that God is with us in the present, a bit like the disciples as they were um, uh, witnessing Jesus' ascension into, into heaven. Uh, they, he was with them and therefore they were able to allow him, in a sense, to go and then, and then to, to trust him for the future. Both are, are, are great, it doesn't matter which comes first, rest or hope, both are really important. Um, but uh, there, is a, there is a wonderful prayer in Romans chapter 15 verse 13 uh, where Paul writes, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the holy power of the Holy Spirit. So hope in God, and if you don't have so much hope this morning, do pray that prayer. And then finally, finally, at the middle of the psalm, in verses 7 and 8, uh, Paul there it basically is, is saying to us to encourage others. Um, not Paul, David. <laughs> David here is sharing his story with others. He wants us to learn from his experiences. He's, he says, my salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. And then here he addresses us. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. That's the climax of the psalm. David has found a place of rest. And from that place of rest, he can encourage us to trust God and to find that God is a place of refuge for us as well, a place of rest for us as well. And it's a really great way for you and for me to, to ground ourselves in this, finding that actually that, that we can rest in God in the shaking, is to encourage others to do the same thing. If we're encouraging others, that really does help. It helps me to be able to ground this in my own life. So could I encourage you to, to get out Psalm 62 and to, and to read this and to meditate on it and to just take yourself through as you find yourself in the shaking, as you find perhaps the media or other people around you with different ideas. There is so much fear and, and anxiety around and stand against that. And put our trust in God. Let's put, let's put that line in the sand, put the marker down and declare that we are depending on God at this time. Let's not be deceived by the enemy. Let's not allow him to, to cause us to be anxious and worried. And let's hope in God. And let's take that good news that God is faithful and encourage others. God bless you as you put this into practice. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for Psalm 62 and these words of David that help us, Lord, to find a means of resting in the shaking. And Lord, we know that we are really in a, in a time of shaking that we couldn't have imagined even just a few months ago. But Lord, there is so much to encourage us in these verses. 
And we do, Lord, indeed, thank you that we can, uh, Lord, declare today our dependence upon you because you are indeed faithful. And Lord, that you are, you are loving. And Lord, that you are our rock and our saviour. And Lord, we can indeed find rest in you. Thank you, Lord, for the, the very clear warning in here, uh, Lord, to not be deceived. Lord, that there are many, many voices, Lord, that would seek to deceive us. Some, Lord, even well-meaning voices. Lord, some, Lord, that are not well-meaning. But, Lord, we want, Lord, to not be deceived by, by any voice at all, but to, Lord, to only hear voices, Lord, that are going to be good for us, to ensure, Lord, that our emotions and our, and our spiritual lives, Lord, are not being manipulated. And Lord, thank you that we can put our hope in you. And Lord, we do pray with Paul again today, Lord, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in you so that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we find that we can indeed rest in, the, in you in the shaking, pray, Lord, that we wouldn't uh, just keep this good news to ourselves, but that we would also encourage others. Lord, thank you for the richness of your word. Thank you for the richness of your love and for our experience of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now Andy is going to lead us in our closing song, which is based on Psalm 62. My soul finds rest in God alone. <laughs> My soul finds rest in God alone, my rock and my salvation, a fortress strong against my foes, and I will not be shaken. The lips may pass and hearts may cast, and lies like arrows pierce me. I'll fix my hope on righteousness. I look to Him who holds me.
So my thanks to, to Steve and to Sally and to Tony, to Andy and to Matt for helping with this morning's service. I do hope that you've found it helpful and meaningful to worship the Lord in this way today. If you have joined us uh, for the first time and don't know much about Haven Green Baptist Church, please do take a look at our website at havengreen.org.uk. If you would like to give to the work of the church and you're not regularly doing so, there is an opportunity to do so on, on our website and I would encourage you to take a look at that. I trust that you'll have a, a really good week uh, as, you, as you go from here. But let's now close, as we often do, with the words of the grace which will appear on the screen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.